Welcome to this week's EMBN show where we're going to be taking a look at Intense's new e-bike. We're also seeing if it's possible to get the rainbow jersey from the UCI in e-bike racing. Wow, and we'll be talking more about the slab. The UCI have endorsed the e-bike world championships. Wow. Um, it's going to be taking place at Worlds at Monson and next year. So an official race yep. where you can win the rainbow jersey on oh an e-bike. That would be amazing at an e-bike. You know, an e-bike world champion. Can you see it? Oh, that is so cool. And I tell you what, I think this makes a huge difference, Chris, oh, yeah. because it, it really validates the sport and it really starts to put some energy mm. behind competing on e-bikes because yeah. I don't really feel like that's happened yet. No, it's, I think it's quite hard to get those bikes into a Pacific event. Yes, you know, it's quite yeah. hard, you know, how we're going to go with the racing on, you know, what yeah. do we see? More power, less power tuning, is it allowed? Different classes. I think oh. all those, you know, it's a, it's a total, it, you know, I can't wait for it to happen. It's I'm mouth buzzing. and it makes me think of different mm. formats. I know yeah. that Neil raced an e-bike race at Sea Otter yeah. and he said it was brilliant, but he, he mm. said it was one of the most exhausting races he's ever done really? because you're flat out yeah, the yeah. entire time. I can imagine yeah. even watching, you know, it's more yeah. of a spectacle watching those guys smashing it around. You know, those yeah. flat sections, those guys are gonna be going at 20 mile an hour, not yeah. eight mile an hour, blowing their out <laughs> trying to swig out the water bottle, you know, <laughs> yeah. on the flat. It's gonna be turbo speed the whole way around. And yeah, it's, it's gonna be amazing. Um, E-bike world championship, what do you think, Chris? Rainbow jersey. Who can get that? Imagine if they well, do. I'm, I'm, might even I'm do looking it. at you. I'm saying, <laughs> e what world do you champion. think? I'd love it. Oh, that would be amazing. Chris Smith, e-bike world champion. Stephen Jones, masters world e-bike champion. I don't think they're doing an old guy category. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> if they are, I think Steve's too old for it. <laughs> Vets, maybe. <laughs> So to add to that, the not only have the UCI added e-bike to the racing, it's the UEC have also added an e-bike class to all those events. Right. They're just gradually working out the rules on this, but I see quite a lot of the uh, events have got, uh, basically you're allowed 504 watt hour battery and below, so that's one class, and you've got 504 watt hours and above. So there's two different classes and they're regulating how far, you know, those races go and those mm. events and you can take I see on the entries you can take one battery or they're dictating two or one batteries for the race. Wow. So you've got to wow. regulate that, you know, power to get around the event in that race. Mm. So total different tactics. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be really exciting. All this racing, I can't wait to see it kick oh, off. I love it. All over the world. I love it. I tell you what, it's like being at the dawn of mountain biking all know, over again. Reinvented. It's sport just, yeah, just becoming new all <laughs> over again. Super exciting. Let's talk more about uh, e Enduro World Series events. Uh, we're going to have a look behind the scenes, uh, first of all, with Chris Roberts, who is down in Monaco. 2019 is obviously the inaugural year of the series, and we've got four dates up for next year. We've got Monaco, which is obviously where we are here, with the circuit just over the border in France. We have a round in Spain, we have a round in Italy, and we have a round in Switzerland. For, for 2019, we're, we're continental based, so I anticipate the majority of teams will be transporting themselves via the road. Obviously, when we're looking to move up to an inter, a true international level in 2020, well, not international, but intercontinental level, let's say, then that's going to become a subject of discussion. But we're pretty confident with where we are at the moment and how the concept of the series is being built and what we want to do with it is to having solutions ready for that for 2020. Flying, obviously, at the moment with the the, uh, the IATA laws for commercial flights is, well, it's something that's going to be quite a tricky subject to negotiate, but what we're looking to do is looking to develop that. Hence why we're not looking to turn fully intercontinental until 2020, but we have uh, you know resources and we have people in place to help us work around that. The Formula E, everybody knows that, huge batteries, they fly them all around the world, so it's not really an issue as long as you have the right people with the right amount of skills in place. What we're doing is concerning the rules is we're actually going to follow the lead of the UCI. The UCI have just made an amendment to their own mountain bike rules. So there's a new rule which comes in at 4.8 in the UCI rules. So, you know, as long as we're following the UCI rules, then, you know, that's going to be applicable worldwide. The basic requirements to be part of our series is your bike has to be conformed with the EN 15194, which is the European law concerning e-bikes. And also, you have to have a diagnostic of the motor so that we can verify that the wheels are the right size compared to your computer programming and so that everything is conform. Afterwards, we do have other protocols in place on the race circuits and afterwards to check. 
Check this out, Hans Ray wraps up his Trans Angeles tour with a ride at the, let me get this right, the Catalina Island with none other than Missy Geo. Looked like they had an amazing time. Yeah. I think it's impossible to not have an amazing time when you're riding with Missy Geo. And an e-bike combined with yeah, Missy Geo. Yeah, yeah, Missy Geo and an e-bike. That's a lot of energy. Definitely looks cool. Five part video series, Hans has been all over. He's been with the Rage Against, uh, Rage Against the Machine uh, guys as well as well as Missy so a hell of a trip mm. loads of locations epic video series just be sure to check I think it's yeah as I say five different uh, issues of that come out so it's a really good vid check that one out yeah it's going to be great he does some name drops doesn't he old hands hands he's been doing it how, how long yeah Rage Against the Machine Missy Jove he knows everybody hands has been doing it come on how long now he has been since 1987 Christ in mountain biking he had a trials career before that he's bloody old <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, surprising what you see in the woods. Now, I've just bumped into Ollie, who's the team manager for Intense Racing UK, and I see his tracer dumped on the floor, <laughs> and he's got the new Taser e bike. Wow. Smiling First, as well. <laughs> smiling as well. Hey, Ollie, you know, you spent, you've done a lot of racing in your life, mm -hmm. and, and here yeah. we are with an intense e-bike. Did you think you'd ever see it? Um, I didn't think I'd ever see it, but after seeing it this morning, I was like offering full retail that I'd buy it off Ollie, even though it's only a demo bike, to be fair. Yeah. Um, I've ridden some other e-bikes, granted, but the first thing I noted with this is just how low it is. It's and a low bottom see bracket, it right? Low, can't you? Let's have a look at the key facts on this bike. It's, what is it, 160 up front? 160 up front, yeah, yeah, yeah 160 rear. Yeah. Um, 275 rear wheel, but right. with a plus size tire. Right, now that's that's pretty, that's a big thing. That, I guess that's similar to the Canyon, right? With the 29, 29 front. 29 front, yeah. 275 rear. But this, it's all about the grip. I have to say, like we run quite low pressures when we first had it out this morning, because they say you can with these Max's bigger tires, mm -hmm. but we quickly went up. I'm about 22 in the back now, whereas we were like 18 at first. Right. And uh, it actually makes the bike feel so much more planted. And you, right. you can ride it like a hooligan, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> well, that's the whole point, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And why would you want to be stuck in an uplift van when you can be turning around the woods? Yeah. Can I play some quick wheel? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. Well, it's pretty light, isn't it? It's got to be about 20, right? Yeah, I don't know what the official measurements are on weight yet, yeah. but um, yeah, around about 20. This is the pro version. Pro, yeah. So it comes with 36s up front. What have we got on the back there? Evolve Fox in the back. Fox in the back, Shimano gears. Shimano gears. Got a uh, Shimano Steps E8000 motor with the 500 watt hour battery. Uh, full carbon chassis by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Fox transfer post, intense stem. It's quite a looker, right? Looks insane, doesn't it? Right, so are these available to buy now? I wish they were. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, they, I, by the end of the year, they're going to be uh, right. ready to roll, basically. So, so I think a perfect Christmas present. Right, great. Hey, I'm so happy I bumped into you guys in the woods. Thanks for giving this sneak look at it. No worries. Uh, keep an eye out on the Intense website. So we are on the Harry Potter Express, the actual train they use in the film. I'm joined by Hannah Barnes from Specialized, and we're on day three of quite an epic journey, Hannah, through the mountains. It started off with a bike ride, then it went to a taxi ride with a really grumpy taxi driver, and then we went into the mountains, right? That was pretty epic, right? It was. <laughs> Way more highs and lows than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, and then, then we went to you know the remotest part. It's actually kind of, I think it's Europe's last wilderness, right? Yeah. It's Really remote and wild out there. You know, hours, uh, hours and hours from the nearest civilization, and then the nearest civilization. There isn't even road access. But it's just a boat house, yeah. so we're pretty out there. And then we've got that boat ride across the sea back to Mali. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, it's been absolutely mental. So you need to check this video out, which uh, myself and Hannah did, kind of the next few weeks. Uh, but Hannah, what do you think about e-bike adventures like this? I mean, it's we wouldn't have been able to do that. On a, on a conventional bike, right? No, definitely not. They're, it's so much fun and opens way more doors than yeah. I ever thought it would. And the ability to cover so much ground quickly yeah. and go on proper big adventures is really, it's really mind-blowing yeah. and eye-opening. Because, you know, we, you know, we've both done racing and I think, you know, at the minute there's a lot of talk about e-enduro world series for, you know, for e-bikes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's the way to go with e-bikes? Uh, or do you think it's more... Well, not, no, I don't really. I wouldn't say. I think for me it's more about the accessibility to the mountains and adventure and being able to get further and further out there into places you wouldn't ordinarily be able to go in just a day yeah. or it, you can just do it quicker and better access. Yeah. But for me, I wouldn't... Um, it's not about kind of using it as to shuttle or yeah. 
do lots of downhill runs. It's about adventure and getting out there. I tell you what, the last few days pretty much was a big adventure. <laughs> it was definitely an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> So it's time for feedback from the videos we've had this week, and this is all from the recent slab video. So let's get into it. We got from Emma, Mr. KD. I first rode down that in 1997 on a Univega with V-brakes when I was 14. Loved it then. Love it now. Caught up there once in the rain. It was the most terrifying moment I've ever had on a mountain bike. Still fun though. Mr. Can, KD, I want to see some pictures. Can you oh. imagine that slab in the wet? I wouldn't even I like to you, walk. I, the first time I rode down that slab, I rode down it, I think it was in 1994, mm. long time ago. Um, and it, it started to just spatter with rain while we were doing it. And, mm. and I thought for a moment, oh my God, if this gets wet, there's only one way you're going. <laughs> so uh, Mr. KD, if you rode down that in the rain, I'd love fair to see play. it on V-brakes I, I want to see a picture, I want to see a Is it a, a ride or a slide? I think yeah. Get a um, most. More here from PPC43 says, that is incredible. But I've got to say, I'd have brought a ratchet strap to tie around the fork crown and the bridge to compress the fork. Mm -hmm. um, I see what you're saying. So to bring the, the fork length down, mm -hmm. Head uh, and uh, essentially make the, yeah. the hill not a steep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's actually a really good idea, we, but is that cheating a little bit? We did tie with the idea there's lots of things we could do. We could have flipped our stems upside down, let the yeah. air pressure out of our fork, so that would have essentially done your ratchet strap to bring that head angle yeah. down, lower that front end. Very clever. All good ways of doing it, definitely. Very clever, but he does end it saying, obviously I'd never do something this mad though, so kudos. <laughs> Cheers, guys. But then we had Trey Munn uh, come on, on it, uh, saying basically, do it with a real mountain bike. Well, you can't. You can't do it. I've tried. You, it's, you must have tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the thing is, you can get, you can go across it, and as you turn up, but it's, yeah. it's so. But steep. you'll be hitting your cranks even, as soon as you put a pedal yeah. straight. The video, Maybe. the video doesn't even do it justice. No. It's it's, so, it's if it so looks steep, steep in a video, yeah. you know this thing is like it is yeah. massive. I assure you, there's no cheating going on whatsoever. That thing was epic. And in fact, now we've got you here, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about it in depth. Okay. So the slab, this is a great video mm -hmm. for uh, EMBN. Yeah. It, it's really great to see a bit of a feature like this, taking something on that I truly don't think you could do on a mountain bike. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, certainly not in the way you guys did no, it. So, not a direct line So successfully. Yeah. Um, I remember when you went and tested this out, mm -hmm. you brought the footage back on your phone and was like, look, it works. <laughs> Excitedly showing yeah. me this footage and I was like, I have never seen anything like that. That is crazy. When I first turned out, obviously I've seen you guys and that, and I've ridden it myself in the years like down, but mm. I went there to ride up it. And when I first saw it again, I was like, it's massive. <laughs> this is not even going to be, I've driven to Bristol and wasted my time basically. And I thought, I've got to try. Yeah. And like the first few cranks on that, and that was like, I got like three or four cranks and it was going up. Kept pedaling and pedaling, <laughs> getting more and more scared, thinking, God, you know, it's just going higher and higher. And I was by myself as well yeah. on that recce, and I was like, oh my God. And I could not believe that yeah. it went well, up mean, there. One of the really difficult things about that obstacle, and mm. um, I, I really don't think it comes across on camera, maybe it's not possible to get it, mm. is that the higher you go, yeah. The more it just feels like if you step off the bike, there's only you're never going to stop yourself, no. and you're going to go sliding down. And and from the slab itself, mm -hmm. the ground just looks vertically yeah, it pulls back up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks so so steep. It's such a frightening obstacle. Yeah. And there's tree um, stumps and rocks and stuff yeah. all in that run out, and that is literally. What do you think that proves about e-bikes? I mean, I've I've always thought that one of the big um, the big things for e-bikes for me is mm. what they can go up. Yeah. I've always been more yeah. excited about that yeah. than what they can go down. Yeah, I, yeah, that seems sure. to be yeah. obvious to yeah, me, yeah. but what they can go up. What does it mean to an e-bike? It can, it can clearly climb these things that mm. just but, literally can't be done yeah. on a normal bike. I think it just opens those doors. Like I've mm. been up like some steeper stuff probably on my e-bike, but like short, mm. that was, you know, for that sort of height to keep going and that sort of angle yeah, is, yeah. is really impressive. And I, yeah, as you said, just love going out in yeah. the woods over the local quarry, just blasting up stuff that you simply wouldn't have been able to do or injecting speed into things where you could yeah. never, you know, you've got an uphill run up into like a feature. Yeah. You can do it now with those bikes. It just like gives you that little, blast of power and there's like jumps like I've done some I remember in the old days on my acoustic bike pedaling and that. sprinting my ass off into these jumps yeah. trying to clear them yeah. but I can literally go from half the run up now on my e-bike and mm -hmm. overshoot them amazing yeah. it's, it's so great to see mm. uh, e-bikes using in that way and mm. I, what about Steve Jones has he still got it 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's, you got to forget <laughs> Steve's he's like... He's got some skills, he, that guy. He he's like, what skills. is he now, 50 plus, I think? He's 57, in, I think. Yeah. He's 57? <laughs> yeah, he's 57. <laughs> but he's still yeah. smashing all that stuff out. But he was ab really, really... He honestly wanted to take... He wanted to go to the toilet, put it this way, at the bottom of that thing. He was that scared when he turned up. Proper <laughs> butterflies. A it's himself. a really great video. Um, great to see the bikes being pushed yeah. in that way. Yeah. Hopefully um, we can do some more, you know. I'd love yeah. to step it up next next level. Doddy actually showed me somewhere in Gibraltar, I think. Some big yeah. drainage down this morning. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knew riding up a hill could be fun? <laughs> Time for some tech. Over to you, Chris. <laughs> so tech, we've got Bosch have launched this new uh, fast charger for their battery system. Basically can top up a battery uh, to 50% in just under an hour. So it means gone are the days where we're chucking the batteries in our back. All we need to do is just take a charger out, stop for lunch for an hour, stick that battery back on charge, boom, you've got another 50% in the tank, ready oh, to go amazing. exploring more miles. Just shows that you don't need to cart those big, yeah, you know, no. five or six kilo batteries around no in your backpack. No more double battery days, no. really useful. Hopefully putting that at an end to that. So it's time for Climb of the Week. What have we got this week, Mark? We have got a great video sent in from Christine. It comes in from Pemberton, BC. Um, the terrain itself looks amazing. Look at these slabs. Wow, it does look uh, cool. This is right up the slab week. This should be mm -hmm. called slab week. Um, loads of grit, mm -hmm. clearly. Um, but I really like how they kind of roll up. If you could create a bit more speed, then you'd really have a great ride up there. Mm -hmm. But you can see they've got plenty of grip, climbing yep. up those slabs, having a great time. Definitely a Climb of the Week for me. Yeah. Remember, just keep sending those uh, videos in on the upload service. We really want to see those climbs. Just stick them in on the show as soon as you send those in. Can you beat that one? Have you got a slab? We've all got a slab, haven't we, somewhere? Everywhere. Everyone's got a slab. Every yeah. city's got a slab. So it's time for Instabangers. There's been a few new fresh faces floating around on the internet. Good riders. Seen Remy Theory on the French Downhill Pro. He's on an e-bike now, shredding it as well. Can't wait to see what he's going to get up to. Yeah, these guys, these guys are all taking it on. Oh, mm. I definitely have. Bearclaw. Bearclaw. Darren Bearclaw is on an e-bike. Now that well. is an exciting, mm. that is an exciting sentence. Um, this guy can ride so well. I mean, he's done some things on bikes that I just don't, I like it emblazoned in my mind. Your brain, yeah. Yeah, just because just such a great rider. Mm. But it's great to see him on an e-bike yeah. enjoying himself. It's good to see all those pros mixing it up now on yeah. the e-bikes yeah. as well yeah. as yeah. a And some, inter bikes. some interesting comments on his Instagram, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, some people give him the usual e-bike beef, but he's been beating <laughs> him down true bear claw style. So yeah. good don't... to see him. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to get on the wrong side of that guy. You don't want to back him up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's time for where in the world? We're in Tahiti Island, Mark. Do you know where that is? Yes, I've got it now. Tahiti, sure. it's near Polynesia. Yeah, so the guys from eBike Polynesia sent this one in. Shredding the trails on the Husqvarna eBikes. Got that Insta360 camera on, giving us some epic views as well. Really cool video, this one. Really good to see um, what a big scene there is going on over there as well. I can't <laughs> find it, Chris. I can't find it. Where about Tahiti. Tahiti? I've no idea. Oh, it's Hawaii, Polynesia. Polynesia. Yeah, but I just said it was near there because that was in front of me. Yeah, I know. Is it near the equator? I found that. <laughs> not from uh, Japan. But we're not too hot on our Tropic geography. Of but cancer, that amazing, like yeah, amazing place. little video. And as I say, looks a great Honolulu? place to ride. Is it near I there? Think so, is it? That's Hawaii, maybe I have to consult Google for this one. But yeah, really good video from Medi. You know, as I say, thanks for sending that one in. Have you found it yet, Mark? Not quite yet. Just keep talking, Chris. I'll find it in a moment. What else was good about <laughs> riding in Tahiti? Oh, the trails, just how green and lush they were. It's got, is it an Insta360 or a GoPro Fusion? It's not under this little black dot, is it? <laughs> if it's under here, honestly, I'll get hold of Steve Jones and I'll bloody kill him. <laughs> it bloody is, is though. Yeah. <laughs> bloody Steve Jones. I knew it. it. Well. Yeah. Tahiti. Hidden under a black dot. Steve Jones, you're a bad man. There it is. We found it in the end. It certainly looks like a great place to ride. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay, so we are giving away four fantastic Crank Brothers Highline seat posts. 100, 125 mil, 150 and 170 mil travel. These are the uh, seat posts we use on EMBN, so click on the link below to get your chance to win one of these.
Okay, one great way to get involved with EMBN is head over to our shop and get some of our goodies. Look, we've got some great merch that's got all of the branding on. You can be one of the crew. Um, and not only do you look great and keep your head warm, uh, you also get to support us, help us make loads of videos and inspire more people to get into e-mountain biking. So it's time for our favourite part of the show. It's the bike vault. What have we got this week, Mark? Oh, Let's I get love, into I it. I love this bit of the show. Right, first bike is from Robert Scott Genius 710. Look at that. Nice. Out oh. in Ireland, Ballyhora. That's a good start, isn't it? It is. That's good. a lovely. Uh, it's a great shot. Um, I've not ridden that bike of you. It's I've pretty, not ridden it's that bike. Cool. So it does look good. Um, it's nice. Going for nice. Is it nice? It's not yeah. more than nice, is it? Right, moving on then. It's nice. What have we got here? Oh. You've got Scott sent in a 2019 Trek Powerfly LT Plus, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. That is blooming lovely. Out I and love that grey. Out and about it. amongst the rattlesnakes on, and scorpions. A, that's a super nice. Come Can on. give that one a super, a super nice? nice. Yeah. yeah, go on. Super nice. Super Get nice. It. Nice start there. Okay, right. We are off with Matthew now. He's mm. uh, NS Snab Plus. Got Paradox Kinetic add-on yes. motor there. Oh, I've got one of them coming to test. Thirty-seven pounds that bike weighs. So pretty lightweight. Yeah. Lost oh, the use man. of his right knee. Christmas oh, Eve, twenty fifteen. Friend got me this bike so he could get out there and ride again. Oh, cool. that imagine is imagine if a friend like that. That's, that's a super nice. That's, that's a super, super nice. nice. A nice bike it? as well. Hit, hit the horn. Hit the horn. <laughs> that is very cool. Oh, look at this one. So you've got Gerardo here. Uh, he sent in a Knevo. He's out in the Andes Mountains at the end of Santiago. That is a spectacular backdrop. 20 minutes from his house as well. What a show off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Some people, honestly. 20 minutes. They've Cactus got it in so there. Good. Look at that. Cacti, well, I, I want it. The picture's super nice and it sounds like so is Gerardo's life. Super nice. <laughs> Very cool. That is nice. Next cool. up is Sebastian's Ghost Cato FS 8.7 Hybrid. Ooh. Germany. Oh, it's a big old kit there in the middle, isn't it? It is. A lot of battery, a lot of motor. I like the colour coded. I like, the like it. I like it. It's nice. Nice. Is that Danny McMaguras? Looks like it. Uh, it's nice. Nice. It's nice. Right, let's move on. What we've got next? The next one. We've got Marcus sent a specialised in from Worcester. New bike today, built for a race go in Stourbridge. My sixth e bike from them since 2014, so he's been into it for a long time. Mm. That is looking good. Do you that like is the a new cool Evo? Looking bike, yeah. Come what on, that's a super nice. That is isn't super it? nice. That's a really bad bike. Nice. Yeah, cool. yeah. Super nice. Next up, we've got a high bike from Frank in Sweden. I'm an old champ in my best years. Um, this is for the bike vault. What do you think, Chris? I don't know. The, the orientation of the picture is a bit funky in my eyes. It's nice. It's nice, but you don't want to mess with the old angles, really. The trees need to stand up straight in the background, don't mm -hmm. they? Yeah, I, I, I think it's... Nice, it's a nice bike. It's nice. It's nice. Uh, Canyon. Mm, Spectral on 8.0. I know that bike quite well myself. Lovely bike. Delamore Forest, uh, exploring trails all over the forest that I would struggle to reach on my old analog bike. Analog, what's the other one? Acoustic? Acoustic. Analog? I prefer acoustic. You we prefer would always acoustic. say acoustic from this point on. It's very derogatory to normal mountain bikes, <laughs> and I think it creates a little bit of tension that I like. Uh, yeah. What are we thinking? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Not, there's people in the background just pulling it away. I think there's no denying it's very nice. It is nice. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's a nice bike. Moving on, we have got Paul's Giant. Full E1 SX Pro. Oh, that, that, that down tube doesn't do it for me. I've got to be honest on the old Giant. But look at that background. Look at the sunset. Yeah, but this is called the bike vault, not the background vault. And I just think... Yeah, I don't know. I Bring mean, I don't down criticize... North Somerset, local to here, look. I don't oh. want to criticise Giant's design team, but I think they... They've always gone for that big boxy down. Do you yeah. think of all their old bikes and stuff? It's a great shot, though. Showing off the bike nicely. <sighs> well done, harsh Paul. man. It's nice. Harsh, man. I'll take this bike vault thing serious. Ooh, look at this. So you've got Mark Ooh. here sending his specialised Kinevo, Alec Canic Chase, post-work blast whilst the sunny days last. No, I like that I little that poem in there. I like that a lot. And i tell you what, I really love in the background, you see all those trails mm. snaking around in the hills. We're the getting a lot of these up. sent in as well, post-work blast, We're getting that little e-bike ride in after yeah. work, making the most of it. So good to see him. I like that. This is the last bike in today's bike vault, and I think that is super nice. Super nice. Super nice. nice. We're out. We're out the bike vault. 
good bike vault. Uh, remember, keep sending those ones in as well. Get that yeah. bike vault filled yeah. up for next week's show. We will feature every bike we get sent in, which is on a little bit of a backlog. Yeah. Keep them coming in. We love seeing all your bikes. So coming up this week on the channel, we've got how to winterize your e-bike, getting the most out of that bike whilst the weather's not nice and hammering down. What else you got, Mark? Um, we have got, well, I'm excited about this video because you were telling me about it earlier on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's basically how fast can you go on an e-bike? Um, let's not give anything away, no. but it sounds pretty crazy. Fast. So it's definitely something you should keep an eye out for because it's um, going to be exciting. Um, yeah, and it's been a great week on EMBN. Yep. Thank Loved you very it. much for watching. Um, there's other videos that you can watch right now. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it a lot. The yep, slab. slab video, you've got to check that one out. That's Don't epic. miss it. Don't miss it. One of our biggest ones. What else we got? We've got turbo mode with Steve, looking at getting the best out of your e-bike using that turbo mode. Yes, that's a good one. And that's definitely it from the show. If, uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you like the show, give us some comments in the box below. And don't forget to subscribe to EMBN for more awesome content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.